Think of the people you interact with every day. Would you want to spend a day in a canoe with them? I'm Nathan Mercero, and as a financial advisor with over 25 years of experience, I've learned that the quality of the people you spend time with is a lot more valuable than what can show up in a set of financial projections. And growing up in Canada, I discovered you can learn a lot about a person when you spend a day in a canoe with them. So I created this show where I interview people I find interesting and inspiring. I invite you to listen in and learn from their stories so you can create the life you want, one filled with wealth, wisdom, meaning, and purpose. I'm delighted today to uh, be with Stephen Koch, who we had this serendipitous meeting on a tram going up uh, Jackson Hole Mountain. And Stephen, it's a pleasure to uh, have you join on Day in a Canoe. I've found just, uh, I've been delighted uh, in learning about your story, meeting you, and glad that you're here to uh, share it with us. Now, you are, uh, I believe, the only person in the world that has climbed the seven summits and snowboarded down, which is an incredible process. Uh, you're a speaker to many, for many organizations about mindset and focus. Uh, one of the things that you that stood out when I met you is you asked me, hey, what's your passion? And that really signaled how you're wired. So welcome to Day in a Canoe. Looking forward to hearing more about your story. So just to take a step back, um, kind of take us through the evolution of your journey. I mean, you've been working on a lot of amazing things. What are what, what were some of the beginning points of that and how did they materialize? First of all, thank you for having me, Nathan. Yeah, that uh, first meeting was special. It's great to meet in the mountains doing doing cool things. Um, and yeah, to back up and just talk about my journey and my story. Um, really, it started, oh, I mean, where to begin? But as far as the climbing and the snowboarding and the adventure stuff, um, what led into it was just being an active kid, loving being outside, loving movement. Um, school was always challenging for me, and I always excelled in, in the outdoors. And that was early on my flow state, skateboarding. And, and skateboarding led to um, snowboarding. And before that, really, though, it was at the ocean. I was in San Diego for much of my, you know, childhood and and used to go to the beach and got a, had a relationship with the ocean. And that led to uh, boogie boarding and then body surfing and, and um, a little bit of surfing and always skateboarding. And that led to when I uh, finished high school, I said, OK, I'm going to take a year off before going to college and I lived in Denver and got a taste of the mountains there uh, where I skied. And that was my introduction to skiing, you know, a few years in, in Denver. And then I said, okay, well, I'll move to the mountains because this new sport of snowboarding, which I had read about, I'm like, okay, I got to try this, you know, so I'm going to find an area that allows snowboarding. This is um, back in 87. And then it was between Jackson and Wyoming or Colorado, you know, and, you know, I was thinking Breckenridge back in the day. And I said, well, the drinking age in Colorado is 21 and in Jackson and Wyoming, it's 19. And the whole deal with that is um, it wasn't just to be able to imbibe. It was that I was working in restaurant in the restaurant industry. And I knew that that was a great way to make a living while I snowboarded and learned this new sport of snowboarding. And I said, Oh, I can wait tables in Wyoming and I, I won't be able to in uh, Colorado. So that pushed me to Jackson and I had a one way plane ticket and two suitcases and, and got off the plane and said, here I am and was blown away. Um, when I got to Jackson and I, I saw the mountain for the first time, I was like, wow it's huge and uh and my friend who i had just met kind of chuckled and said yeah snow king is pretty big <laughs> and and <laughs> and i didn't even realize that you know the biggest mountains weren't here this was the town hill but it was still such a big such a big hill my first job was baking cookies 
at the at the area because that gave me the ski pass and I took a lesson um, and rented a board and immediately fell in love with this sport of snowboarding and and then found my tribe in skiers and snowboarders and just was chasing them around the mountain the fastest skiers and for the next couple of years and that led to um, to me wanting to you know step outside my comfort zone and and see what was beyond first it was beyond the area boundaries and then it was up in the in the park uh the grand teton and all the teton peaks had had not been snowboarded back then so it was such a serendipitous time nathan to be a young excited passionate snowboarder who had the willingness and ability to to find mentors and seek out uh these new adventures in the mountains and uh and I did that by meeting um, Tom Turiano, actually, was my early mentor. He's a local guide and was the guidebook author of uh, Teton Skiing and Select Peaks. Um, but at the time, he was, you know, had quit college at Colorado School of Mines to to go be a ski instructor in Jackson and and was passionate about mountaineering and willing to take me under his wing and literally show me the ropes. And that led to, um, yeah, that led to climbing and snowboarding on the, the grand and doing the first snowboard descent in the grand, the middle and the South. Um, after two years of snowboarding, I was just like so gung ho and blown away that I could do something that no one else had done it really tickled something uh inside of me and and moved me and and got me really fired up so i love how you listen to your passion at an early stage to say you know there's there's school or there's these other forms of boxes but those aren't aren't for me and i know a lot of our listeners are executives or entrepreneurs they're you know in corporate america and doing good work but there's also the sense of how do I, you know, kind of realize my potential and how do I be myself and how do I live on the edge? You know, they don't have to, you know, do jump out of an airplane to do that, but maybe there's a sense of there's something more. Um, what do you, and I know that you speak to many organizations, just if we just kind of frame the early years of your evolution what do you say to that person that's listening, that's saying, hey, I, I, I think there's something more. I might, might want to scratch that itch. And how did you personally uh, negotiate through that? Literally just following my heart, following my bliss. You know, what what am I moved to do? You know, yes, yeah, saying yes to opportunities, saying yes to the instinct. And you know, there were times and it got me in trouble when I didn't have the experience, but I survived it and I was able to learn and grow from it. Um, you know, not being paralyzed by failure, not letting failure or the fear of not succeeding stop me. That really allowed me to to do unprecedented things and, and step into the role of uh, being a pioneer. And then what led to the Seven Summit pursuit and how did that all materialize? So after snowboarding the three major Teton peaks, and this is, you know, after my first year in Jackson, I was like, hey, dad, I'm, I'm not quite ready for college. I'm having fun here. The snowboarding is really cool. I'm finding my people. He's like, no, take your time. It's fine. And uh, one turned into two, three. And I said, okay, I want to go to Chamonix, France. I heard about this place, you know, that was the next level. Jackson at the time was kind of the epitome, the epicenter for extreme in, in the States. And Chamonix was that for, you know, Europe and much of the world. So I said, let me go there and see see what it's like and, and be a small fish in a bigger pond. And uh just was blown away with that. Didn't didn't really know. I took French for a year in school. Didn't know French very well, but I said, you know, I'll go figure it out. Um, and I did. I, you know, just met people and had experiences, and one thing led to another, and I met people and got a place to live and got a job 
you know, I was willing to do anything under the table. So I started by washing dishes at the pizza joint and, uh, and just was snowboarding as much as possible, pretty much all day and then working nights and, um, to see what they were doing there and the level, um, the different level and, and the mindset because of the deep history of mountaineering and steep skiing and, and then also snowboarding there extreme in general, this was back when extreme was the new word. And that meant, you know, cliff jumping, um, in the States, but extreme skiing in, in Europe was skiing and snowboarding steep routes, uh, that were basically climbs. And I dove right into that and had an experience, uh, of a lifetime. And I also won a race called the Derby de la Meige, uh, which is a really fun race where you have three of the four different disciplines, the dis different disciplines being alpine skiing, snowboarding, telemark skiing, and, and back in the day, mono skiing. So you have three of the four on a team with one woman uh, per team. That was the rules and it's top to bottom, 7,000 vertical feet and the fastest combined times win and uh, our team won. And, you know, I was like, okay, they gave me a check, which I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. And I ended up staying for another five months. Um, after that, I was just said, I'm going to stay and, and experience the summertime here. And that led into my rock climbing and Alpine climbing. Did, did the seven summits, was that a, a natural evolution or did you start out saying this is the goal that i have let's go for it like how did that evolve so after chamonix i was like well what's next you know i've snowboarded really steep things at this mo these moderate elevations the next thing that i'm called to do is to try my skills at something higher on a higher mountain and i researched it uh, I'd read the book uh, Seven Summits by Dick Bass and was introduced to Aconcagua, uh, which was not a super technical mountain, but very high at nearly 23,000 feet, highest mountain outside of the Himalaya. And I said, OK, I'm going to go. So I worked all summer after moving back to Jackson um, and had a partner lined up to go ski it with me. And he bailed two weeks before the trip. And I said, well, I'm, I'm going anyway, I'm ready for some, some summer after, um, uh, after working, shoveling snow, uh, in the winter, you know, in the fall, I was ready. So I went down and said, well, I'll just go alone and see what happens, have an experience. So my first expedition internationally was, uh, was alone and I ended up, um, uh, getting tent bound for four days at 19,000 feet and my tent ripped apart. I, you know, got out of there barely and got frostbite on the way down. So, um, it didn't work out, uh, to get to the top and snowboard down that time. So I returned a year later and was able to, uh, get to the top and had better, better weather. And it was interesting because I got invited on a trip to Denali to be filmed uh, with a ski expedition with uh, Rick Wilcox, um, or excuse me, Rick Ridgeway back in 93. And I said, yeah, I would love to go be filmed snowboarding on Denali. And, you know, that was just being drawn to these high peaks and serendipitously got invited, even though um, when the park service found out that a snowboarder was coming for their film they threatened to pull the film permit uh if a snowboarder was involved so they said oh well you can't come because we don't want to have our film permit pulled highly questionable and potentially illegal <laughs> thing back in the day but they didn't question it um but i ended up getting the plane ticket anyway which was already purchased so i went on my own and and uh climbed denali and and had a great experience. And it was on the summit of Denali that I said, wow, I'm, you know, I've climbed two of the seven summits. 
I don't know if it's possible, but I want to try and snowboard them all. And that's when I came up with the Seven Summits Snowboarding Quest and and just dove in and said, this is what I'm going to do with my life right now. And over what period of time did that uh, take place to get to all seven? That was from uh, 91 to 2003. Yeah, I was thinking it would be, uh, Nathan, a three-year project max if just with different setbacks and challenges along the way um uh took took that long to finally get to everest um in monsoon season in summer of 2003 and i can't believe it's coming up on you know it's what 18 years right now no 19 years wow it is it just flies it was like yesterday i was there so and so when you're spending your time sharing uh with people your story your takeaways whether it's individually at you know corporate retreats and, and the such i know you're a sought after speaker what are you translating to the person in the room you know that says yeah i'm not going to do seven summits i'm not going to do one i'm like afraid of heights so let's just you know write that off but what what do you what are the learnings that you had that are transferable to anyone that could apply to their situation when they're looking to get out of their comfort zone? Yeah. Um, it's one, one theme I talk a lot about is being a personal pioneer. You know, I was a pioneer in this, with this new sport and in the mountains in this mountain world, but really we can all be pioneers for ourselves by just saying, yes, being curious and stepping outside the place we're comfortable and, you know, not disregarding fear. I think fear is hyper important to what I've done to keep me safe, but it's also so important to realize when it's a benefit and when it can be a detriment, when it can be holding us back. And so really I talk about different ways and tools, um, uh, to navigate that, navigate the fear. And, you know, I was a mountain guide for 25 years uh, in the Tetons. And I put together teams of people from individuals that had a common goal to want to climb and uh, climb the Grand Teton. And so what I did was I would teach them what they needed to know about rock climbing and the rope skills. And then I would create a team and have them gel. So another big theme I've uh, talked a lot about is is leadership and teamwork. Because uh, the climbing of the Grand Teton with the guide, there's no better comparison than uh, having a team and, and needing to put them together and have them work cohesively. And I can't do everything as a leader. You know, if I'm, when I'm up front leading the train, if there's a problem in back and I stop leading and come back and deal with, you know, a rope issue, for example, the whole train stops, you know, and as leaders, it's so important to trust your people and, and obviously teach them well and then step back and let them do their part. Uh, those are great principles. And uh, it's, it's one thing to read it in a book, but when you live it and when you're doing it in your own personal mountain that you're climbing, that's where the greatest uh, lessons are learned. And it's truly a gift. Just want to wrap up. Um, so what, what are you working on today? What are the things that are inspiring you to, you know, show up every day and, and be energized? Family is first and foremost. Uh, my biggest passion and love is uh, I have four children and just spending time with them individually and and really my opportunity is is just being more present with them and doing what they want. I think as a young dad, I would do what I wanted and bring them along and say, oh, isn't this great? Isn't this fun? But more and more, it's really just stepping back and saying, hey, what do you want to do? And being okay with whatever it is, you know, doing art or building Legos or just running through the flowers with uh, with my five-year-old daughter and it's all good.
Um, and then professionally, I, I'm uh, coaching uh, quite a bit. I have, you know, several clients that I work with um, one-on-one. And then, you know, I have, you know, who you know, Kevin. And I love getting together and doing adventures with him. We have such a great time really looking at what his big goals are and what his desires are, what he really wants and what's getting in the way and how to navigate that. Because most issues we have are self-imposed, most fears, most roadblocks. It's us just throwing the roadblock in front of us. It's like, hey, first of all, having the awareness of that and then, you know, moving it aside or or stepping around it to, to really attain the goals. But uh, my main focus is to inspire people to to follow their heart, to realize that we can do anything if we believe and we, you know, set clear goals and and don't let fear stop us. Stephen, I want to thank you so much for sharing your story today. It's inspiring and it's been a pleasure getting to know you and I look forward to uh, staying in touch. Yeah, thanks so much, Nathan. Good to be with you. Thank you for listening and tuning in to Day in a Canoe. We're thrilled to have you as part of our community. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review and share it with your friends and loved ones. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on social media platforms by searching Day in a Canoe. We'll see you next time.